I slowly open my eyes, letting the voices of my dream echo in my head and force me awake. I rub my eyes before sitting up and looking at my desk. Clock. Ah, clock! 7 a.m. Why am I up so early? I fell back onto the bed and closed my eyes, trying to go back to sleep. However, something kept me awake. Why? It's too early to even be alive! I gave up and sat up, staring at the fireplace across from my bed. A sigh escaped from between my lips before I threw my legs over the side of the bed. What to do at 7 a.m. in the morning? Yes. Homework? Yeah, let's do homework here. We haven't tried that yet. I had to work on my homework. I had school tomorrow, regardless of what was happening in my life. At that moment, I wish school was over. Well, might as well get it done now. I reluctantly took out my books out of my bag that sat on the floor. I made my bed into a study picnic area as I began to work through my homework. The benefit of doing your homework in the morning? Not having to do it later. The downside? Mornings suck for trying to use your brain for anything educational. The formula for fixed costs is FC plus VC times Q equals TC. Marginal cost is total costs by- what? Oh, what the hell is this? <laughs> I felt my brain slowly start to ramp up the flow of logical thought, even though I'm pretty sure it's doing the opposite for me. Speeding up the time I was working on each economical equation I had. It wasn't a matter about me being smart about anything when it came to doing homework or doing well in class, but I was quick to learn and easily retain information. Lucky you. Wow. <laughs> if only I can learn about the boys this fast. I mean, you pretty too much do. <laughs> I stopped. Did I really just compare learning about demons to learning about economics? I mean, hey, why not? It's 7 a.m. It's too early to be alive, let alone make sense. So go to sleep. I shook my head and continued to work. I returned to bed, feeling the weight of the morning drag me under my covers to try sleeping again. I had energy, but I wanted more sleep. It was Sunday, and nothing was happening today. Come on, eyes, back to sleep. I shut my eyes and tried to slow my breathing. I looked at my phone to check the time once again. It was noon, yet it felt like I had slept for much longer. Why is time going so slowly? I sighed, got changed to normal clothes, and went out to the main hall and sat on the stairs. Sundays were very boring. However, the muffled sounds of battle caught my attention. Huh? I quickly went out to the backyard in response to the noise I had heard. In the yard were all five of the boys practicing fighting. Sam was in the middle with the other four surrounding him and throwing punches and kicks at him. Sam, being the strongest of the bunch, blocked and dodged each almost masterfully. Eh, it's don't disturb him. I just watched. The boys were very much in their own world, focusing on the training they were in. It was better not to disturb them. I checked the time and decided to head inside to the kitchen. I was getting hungry, and I'm sure the boys would need to eat soon, so lunch was a must. Might as well make lunch today. It's been a while since I cooked. Okay, so someone said it doesn't matter. So, let's do... What do you think you'd like more? Pizza! Pizza! God, can you imagine Eric eating pizza? No, I can't. He'd, <laughs> he'd be like, what is this? What is this? It's gonna get on my clothes, and then I won't be able to seduce the ladies. Oh. Pizza is always good, no matter what time of day it is. Do we have any? Luckily, we had some pizza in the freezer. Pizza more! <laughs> pizza more. That's um one of Michaela's earlier games. We had some free. Yeah, we had some pizza. We had some pizza in the freezer to heat up. Pizza more is baked with a lava pizza. Had all the markings of pizza types, including pepperoni, sausage, mushrooms, gross, and extra cheese. Just top it, bake it, and serve. Mamma mia! I'd have to get the more later. I placed the food in the dining room. However, none of the boys were there by the time I brought the final dish out. I carried that dish to the main lobby, hatching the boys separating into different rooms of the house. Part of me wanted to go to one in particular. The other part of me wanted to just leave them be and take the food in my hand to my room and eat. Maybe I could go out today while the boys focus on training. Eh, we're gonna go find one of these, bye. I quickly rushed back and grabbed a second food dish before hunting down one of the boys. I looked down each hall trying to find one of the Incubi wandering so I wouldn't have to go through each individual room finding them. I pursed my lips in irritation. Where the heck are they? I sighed, knowing I'd have to search for them in each room. I quickly turned and headed back to the dining room one last time. <gasps> He's gonna eat the entire pizza, isn't he? When I arrived, I gasped. Matthew was crouched into the- wait. Matthew- What? Matthew was crouched near the kitchen doorway, peering into it as if a rat had gotten loose in the pantry. He was the stalking exterminator. Matthew? 
I quickly shut my mouth and pressed my lips together in silence. Okay. He's trying to find the scroll thing, isn't he? The knifey scroll thing that goes, <laughs> I pressed my lips together in silence, confused but fearful as to why I had to be quiet. I tiptoed to Matthew, who was crouching by the entrance to the kitchen. His gaze and head moved across the side of the kitchen, still trying to find whatever he was looking for. He's in there. <laughs> what? Matthew's face was seriously fearful and intense. Who was freaking him out this much? My mind, however, instantly pinned the person down in my conclusion. Malix. Malix? Why did he come back when he was in my kitchen? I started to freak out, remembering the fear I felt the first time we had met. However, I wasn't sure. Where were the others if it was Malix? I lost sight of him, but I quickly found him and cornered him in there. I know he's in there. <laughs> Matthew is so me when there was like a bug in my room. Who's in there? That fluffy killer thing. Fluffy killer thing. I bit my lip, suppressing a laugh. Once I swallowed my laughter down, I let out a sigh. You mean your cute bunny doll? Yeah, that thing. Wait, it's not cute. Matthew instantly regretted not whispering and covered his mouth. I could not help but goo. <laughs> What's he doing in the kitchen? Matthew turned me with an expression of utmost seriousness. Something told me that what he said would be cute and funny, but I decided to bite my tongue gently to not laugh, no matter what. I don't know. I failed to keep hold of myself and started to giggle again. The thought of a doll doing anything but sitting there made me giggle. Matthew tried to hush me, waving his arms frantically to keep me quiet. Matthew, Simon's a... Oh, what? Simon. Oh, okay, we named it, I guess. Oh. Matthew, Simon's a doll. It can't do anything. You named him? Of course. Simon Tabby. Cute, isn't it? Matthew lost some sort of defeated whine before turning back into the kitchen, trying to find Simon from where he was. I placed our food on the table and looked as well. So what's your plan of attack? Well, I plan to make my way through the kitchen as quietly as I can, and hopefully not get stabbed. Sounds like a plan to me. <laughs> Sounds simple. Matthew nodded in agreement before finally moving from his spot and tiptoeing into the kitchen. <laughs> A plus. <laughs> Thank you for putting that in my life. God. I'm so used to them just like zipping off the screen, but he actually tiptoed off the screen. <laughs> I stood there, unsure of whether or not I should follow suit. We're obviously gonna follow him. Join the hunt! Ooh, caribou! <laughs> <laughs> lug, 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 ooh, caribou! <laughs> I'm glad the reference made it through. <laughs> Could it not? Let's really, be real. It'd be really weird if I was just like, ooh, caribou, and you were just like, what? <laughs> God. I didn't know why I was up for this, but I followed along. The small, adventurous side of me was very happy with my decision, but another side of me was questioning, asking me why I did that. Matthew slowly walked through the kitchen, scanning the cupboards and surfaces with a meticulous glare. It was both amusing and slightly frightening to see how serious he could be. Do all your toys get out of control like this? No, it's just this one. I don't know why. All my other toys are okay. Other toys? Matthew nodded, stopping his search to look at me. That's what I do. Uh, make toys. I made them for my mother all the time back in the Abyssal Plains. To help her cope with her position. Uh, her position? She's the fourth wife of my birth father. Each of us have a different mother, and all of them, except for Damien's, are queens. My mom, though, hates sharing, so I distracted her with toys. I mean, why not, I guess? I didn't know what to say. A demon with multiple wives seemed natural, but I guess because I was human, I felt the twinge of disgust run through my veins nonetheless. Still, it was adorable how Matthew tried to cheer his mom up with his abilities. I was then reminded of my grandfather and how he made toys all the time for kids. Matthew's power to make small toys instantly would have been so useful to my grandfather. I shook my head and began to search for Simon again. Let's keep looking for Simon. Matthew nodded before joining in. I felt like I was in a comedy mystery, looking for a child's toy instead of a murder weapon. Come on out, creepy thing. His name is Simon. Matthew ignored my statement and I began to slowly open the he began to slowly open the cupboards, sifting through the inside contents. I decided to follow suit, starting at the opposite end of the kitchen. Matthew, what do we do if we find him? We stick him back in my pocket, a and, uh... I looked to Matthew, looking, waiting for him to finish replying. However, he kept his eyes to the ground, trying to answer my question and remaining in thought. I continued to search the cupboards, unsure now if this plan was going to go anywhere. 
Why was I even doing this? Simon Tabby was a... <gasps> what the? Matthew and I scan the kitchen frantically, searching for the source of the laugh. I knew that thing was evil. What? Oh. Suddenly, everything went black. <gasps> Who turned out the lights? I gripped the nearby counter, not wanting to hit anything or fall off in the darkness. There were no windows, so the room was almost completely pitch black. What the fuck kind of kitchen doesn't have windows? I could hear skittering across the floor, like a rat rushing to escape with cheese in his mouth. I instantly jumped in fear, before suddenly being pushed to the ground! <laughs> Watch out! I felt myself hit the ground with a body on top of me. Let the bodies hit the floor! <laughs> <laughs> Two hands were slammed besides my head onto the tile floor, stopping the person above me uh, from crushing me. Hey, are you okay? I am now, baby. Matthew? I yeah, I am. I stirred up at Matthew, letting the situation sink in. We were looking for a doll, and now we were on the ground. Oh my. What broke my thoughts was the flash of gold running across Matthew's eyes. I could feel heat radiate from his body, but the air was tense and his body was almost shaky. Matthew, are you okay? I... I, um... I heard him gulp, answering my question. He wasn't okay. I could tell, but he wasn't moving. Matthew? S sorry. I, uh... Soon, a golden glow covered Matthew's eyes. I expected to feel warmth in my body from an upcoming spell, but I felt nothing. Something was wrong. I... I need you to... I need you to push me off. I, uh... I... From the sound of his voice, he was desperate to get up and off of me. Why couldn't he move, though? Then it hit me. Awkward boner alert. <laughs> Matthew, do you need energy? Wait, wait. You're so weak right now. You can't even move at all, like, a little bit. Then how is he still above us? Wouldn't he have collapsed by now? Does that mean that, like, if we went for any other boy, Matthew would just be collapsed in the kitchen for a few hours? <laughs> wow. Uh, I, I do. But I... Matthew shut his eyes to hold his golden gaze for me. He didn't want to take his my energy... Why? Want to take his my <laughs> Why? Why was he ashamed to? Mwah! If he needed energy, I was willing to give it. I gently grabbed Matthew's face and tilted his head to angle with mine. Leaning in closer, I brought my face and lips up to his and kissed him deeply. Are we? I we better get a CG for this. This is just like black the entire time. I didn't know if this would help, but it was how he got energy before. I shut my eyes, waiting for the draining feeling to reappear in my body. Matthew didn't move, nor did I feel energy drain from me. I opened my eyes and saw Matthew staring wide-eyed at me, but unmoving. He was unsure of what to do, and I had silenced him in confusion. I pulled away and spoke. I want to give you some of my energy. You used a lot of it, and I'm sure that the energy you took from me was only used for healing. Let me help you. I... I, I uh, mean... I really... I don't. Matthew, if you don't want my energy, just tell me. But I'm offering it to you if you do. All of a sudden, I felt that familiar feeling of warmth run through my body once again. I felt my body slightly heat up as Matthew wrapped an arm around my body and pulled my body tighter to his. There were so many bodies! Matthew grew a lustful gaze before bringing a hand up to cup the back of my neck. Oh, there we go. Uh <laughs> Before I knew it, Matthew pulled me into a gentle but passionate kiss. Heat erupted through my body as his kiss slowly and almost timidly got deeper. Matthew kept an arm around my waist while I rested my hands on his chest. The energy from my body was almost draining, slowly draining in the kiss, making me feel light and warm. It was almost pitiful how comfortable and how willing I was in this situation. Still, I had no regrets. I was enjoying every bit of this kiss. Matthew was full of surprises. Oh god. As childish as he was, he definitely was proven to be a man while he was kissing me. Matthew wasn't forceful, but his kiss was deep and passionate, and it felt almost magical. It was how I imagined the first kiss to be like, except with energy drain. Soon though, the energy drain stopped, and Matthew gently pulled his face away to end the kiss. I stared up at him as we both panted for air. I had never kissed like that before, and I was so lost in the moment that I had forgotten how to breathe. Matthew moved a strand of hair from my face behind my ear, eyes still full of desire. Matthew stared silently at me, unsure of what to say. However, I could tell that he was full, yet yearning. 
I could feel the hand hold of his mind-altering spell fade away. But I still felt hot. Something told me I wanted some more. At the same time, I wasn't sure if I truly did want to give any more. Eh, keep going. I opened the opportunity, and I was enjoying it as much as he was. I wanted more, and I was going to let him keep going. I wanted to keep going. I leaned up and kissed him back. Matthew gasped against my lips, but continued to kiss back. I could feel him pull on the tail of my bow, releasing it and following- Yeah, he only does the top two buttons of the blouse. Releasing and following his hand off him around my neck. He moved the ribbon to his pocket before gently unbuttoning the top two buttons of my blouse. The desire in my body drove me insane, forcing a moan to escape my lips as he ran kisses from down my lips and exposed, exposed, exposed neck. Yeah. <laughs> As he began to ravish my neck and shoulder in hot kisses, I leaned my head back and let a pleasurable sigh escape my lips. Matthew was ruthless in his passionate kisses on my skin. Matthew didn't stop touching and kissing me, making more moans and gasps rush out of my mouth into the open air. He even fell. But he was as hot as I was. I couldn't even comprehend how much time we spent making out. I was lost in the pleasure that I didn't care. Call it sinful, but I didn't care. I loved it. His touch, his kiss, his heat. I desired it beyond anything at that moment. Even as he lowered his kisses down my chest just above my bra. My heart was beating wildly in my chest. Something about Matthew intrigued me immensely. But something made my heart quicken with him. for him. It couldn't have been love, but it was too passionate to be lust. What was it? However, I began to feel dizzy, seeing the ceiling start to spin almost wildly. I gripped to Matthew's shoulder, trying to signal him to stop. My mind faded to black before I could let out another sound. I felt good. I didn't care that I was blacked out. I felt warm and fuzzy in the darkness. I never knew indulging in that kind of passion would be that good. I now just wanted to awaken, hopefully in a good way. My eyes eventually fluttered open, adjusting to the sight around me. I felt familiar silk sun beneath me, letting me know I was in my bed. I slowly sat up, stretching from the tiredness that still lingered. I felt a very soft pain on my neck and shoulders, and I could feel my swollen lips pulse gently in healing. However, when I looked down at my body, I saw that my shirt had been pulled back up, and rebuttoned as if nothing between happened happened to me and Matthew happened. Yeah, I was just missing my ribbon. Before I turned to get out of bed, though, I spotted my ribbon on the pillow beside the one I slept on. It was tied. <laughs> it was tied around Simon Tabby in a nice bow with a small note attached to it. How in the hell did you accomplish that? I thought you'd be so afraid of it. I gently slipped the note from the tie and opened it to read it. I I'm really, really, really sorry. I I didn't mean for it to go that far. Please forgive me. Aw, you're precious. Oh, you know, we, we don't need to forgive you. No, 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 no. I stared at the note, letting a small smile grace my lips. He went too far? I enjoyed it a lot. It was cute, though, to imagine him thanking me for something we both didn't enjoy. I brought the note to the chest, letting the memories of our meeting flood my mind. I indulged myself, too, Matthew. I looked to the time out of curiosity. The large white numbers on my phone showed 5.31 p.m. Yikes. Four hours of being knocked out, and I still feel tired. It was Sunday, so I was allowed to sleep longer if I wanted to. The remainder of the night passed by, surprisingly uneventful. The boys continued to train with each other, but were kind enough to stop and make me dinner. I was glad for that. Unsurprisingly, the food was perfect, but it felt a little empty without the boys to eat with me. They most likely had already eaten, but still... I felt lonely. Matthew didn't even eat our food, as far as I know. I couldn't let it bother me. I ate and went back to my room to study and sleep. Surprisingly, I felt good going to bed that night. I felt like I could finally have a peaceful sleep after the previous rough nights I had. I felt good.